Hello, hello everybody. Hello beautiful people. I don't know if this is going to be a personal vlog or a body odor vlog. If it's a personal vlog, that means I probably said some shit that I feel like I should have said. Um, and then I said, you know what, I don't think I'm going to put it up on the internet. But I don't think I'm going to say anything too controversial here. Uh, just got done shopping at Publix. And I was surprised at the fucking total I got from Publix. I got 5845 Almost $60 for a person that doesn't really have a job at the moment. You know what's so funny? I just recently did Uber. Not Uber. I did Postmates. I did a delivery thing for Postmates. And I was going to do it again. But at the same time, I was going to like set like a schedule for one day. Just do like a delivery for delivery for a couple of hours. And the next day go to the CDL training school so I have money coming in. But I was like, fuck all that shit. I just want to get this CDL training thing done. Because, <laughs> because I, like, what is was projected to me, like, when they try to sell you this, sell you their courses, you say, oh, you're going to get done in less than, like, two to four weeks or something like that. And I think I signed up on, like, January 6th. And now it's uh, February 20th, 2020. That's almost like fucking two months. It's almost two months of me just doing this CDL bullshit. And again, I'm I'm sorry. This is probably going to be a, this is this whole thing is probably just going to be a major rant about the CDL school, uh, CDL training, and all this other shit. And I also want to talk about some other things too. But I I want to say like they projected it to be like two to four weeks, which it hasn't. I, I think it has been like six weeks. What is that? Two to four weeks. So if it, it was January six, let me see here. Let me see. Let me see here. Uh, let me see this thing. Okay, so this is how you do it. You do it like this. So this is January six. Oops. Sound. So this was January six. So that's one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks. <laughs> So that's seven weeks I've been in that school, seven weeks, and at this moment, like on on this particular day, I'm doing the second exam, which is the parking exam. So with the parking exam, there's three different parking maneuvers you got to do for, for, for class A, class B, whatever. First thing is just straight back parking, which is, the, the name is simple in itself, you just go straight back you're in a, like a set of cones and you go straight back I actually can show you what it looks like uh, let me see here is you just going all the way back so okay okay oops Did that work I think it worked no didn't it work didn't it work Ooh. okay no it didn't oh, what the fuck what am I doing wrong I guess I'm doing it wrong. Uh, let me take this off. Now. No? Yeah. Oh, duh. So first off. Cool. Let me actually increase the size here. So this is straight line backing. Straight line back. And basically you just. Your vehicle is just going backwards. And then like there's a second parking maneuver. Where you're supposed to do offset backing. Uh, left or right. But I, I was told that within the exam, I'm basically just going to do offset right. And then the last one is not actually parallel parking. They said parallel parking they don't even do anymore. So the last one is alley docking. So you got to drive your vehicle backwards and try to fit it in this section right here. And you have to make sure that this, let me try to increase the size here. Let me see if I can move it down here. You got to make sure that this component, like there's this back component of the vehicle, touches like this square rectangle. And it has to fit inside this box. If it goes over or under this box, you automatically fail the test. In addition to that, like, uh, let's see here. In addition to that, there's basically like, you have like 12 points that you can deduct. There's like 12 points in total that you can deduct meaning like if you hit a one of these cones it'll be if you hit one of these cones is doing one of the maneuvers that's three points deducted or three points added up 
So you can't go over 12 points. That's what I actually meant to say. So if you hit one cone, that's three points. So that means if you hit like five cones, you automatically fail. Um, and ultimately, like how I feel about the testing, because I'm ha at one o'clock. I want at this moment it's like 10:44 a.m. At 1 p.m., I have to drive to the location. I have to drive to the CDO school in order for me to do the test or whatever. And how I feel about the test at the moment. I feel like I have a 76% chance to succeed because straight line backing is you just backing with the truck. And then the offset is, is pretty easy too because I, I practice pretty good. I practice a pretty good amount of times for me to be decent. But straight line back, or what's it called? Alley docking? Alley docking, I just practiced that shit yesterday. And I only was able to do it four to five times. And I was trying to do it for the, like the last fucking three days, but the last three to four days, but they wouldn't allow me. Because like within the school, 98% of the school is made up with class A drivers. So many of the vehicles that they're going to use are just going to be class A vehicles and they're just mainly focused on them. So if there's some, you know, class A vehicle that wants to do alley docking and shit like that or do some of the other stuff like that. I'm not able to do anything. And I was, you know, bring it up with like instructors. Yo, I need to do alley docking. I haven't done it yet. But then there's like this, this instructor. I don't know if he's Cuban or he's Dominican. He's black. I, I don't know if he's like Cuban or Dominican or Puerto Rican. I just call him a little bitch. I don't say I'm, I don't call him a little bitch in, in my, you know, I don't call him, hey, little bitch. But I like in my head, I'm like, you're a little bitch. And the reason why I call him a little bitch is because he's like very condescending to me. And I've noticed that he he does he has like a different attitude. He treats me differently compared to other people. Which is another reason why I fucking hate this course. Which is another reason why I hate this school. And is another reason why I feel like it's taking me longer to complete the course. Is because a lot of people are not trying to help me. <laughs> a lot of people are like like just like pushing me off like and I have to like figure it out my I gotta figure this shit out on my own. Like, I'm supposed to be trained. And I had to figure this shit out on my own and shit. Like, don't get me wrong. There were a few instances where, like, instructors tried to help you. But when I look at, like, because there's, like, a, a, a truck. There's a field outside of the school where there are the park. There is a section for parking maneuvers. There's a section to learn how to do pre-inspection and doing the lab test, basically, checking leaks along the brakes for your vehicle and then there's a section that you can do for alley docking but again since like 98 percent of the people who go into these go into the school go for class a there's only like there's several trucks maybe four or five trucks for class a vehicles but there's only one vehicle for class b <laughs> that's working there's actually two but those two aren't working or something they're like all the way out in the back and no one tries to fix it or anything so so say for example, there, there there happens to be like class B people who are class or new students who want to learn class B um, and I want to do parking, th I would have to wait for the class B people <laughs> to, to learn all the instructions and how to do the pre-inspection trip for a class B vehicle in order for me to do like the class B type of parking maneuvers so that means i have to like wait an hour or two or some shit before class a like there's already a separate vehicle for class a for pre-inspection to look to talk about the you know to train on the to train for the exam to talk about the different components that are worth it that make up the vehicle and there's already like several trucks for straight line backing and for alley docking and for offset backing but there's only one vehicle for class b which is fucking bullshit. In addition, <laughs> so like, in addition to that, like last week I was really trying to, I was really trying to learn how to do parking and stuff like that. And there's this one guy who's, I guess, is specifically supposed to be the instructor, and he's like, in the very least, he's in his early twenties and whatever. And he would get, he will always come at like two p.m. But last week, he would come at two p.m. And then, like, at like an hour and thirty minutes later, he'll just leave. He'll be like, "Oh, I got somewhere to be, so I got. I'm sorry, I gotta go." So then, I would have to just stop training in general. 
typically I want to train for at least a couple of hours, but it's like, like that's the thing that just bothers me. Like even when I want to sit here and just do things for like at least three hours to get it right, I don't have the ability to do it because there's not enough. Because all the the places where like if I want to do alley docking, there's already people preoccupied. There's already class A vehicles doing that shit, so I never really have thorough training to do it. In addition to that, when I do have some type of training session like it's cut short because like the person who's supposed to manage class b like leaves he just leaves in like an hour and 30 minutes and it's like bro if you're going to just be in a fucking if you're just going to be in a job for an hour and 30 minutes bro then why are you even here bro like you know what i'm saying if you're going to show up to a job and your job is an instructor and you're just going to stay there for just an hour and 30 minutes Man, you should have just stayed home or you, you should have just went to the whatever activity that you needed to go to. If you're just going to stay there for an hour and 30 minutes, like, that's the bullshit. So, like, a part of me feels like there's like a 76% chance I will pass. So there's a 24% chance I think I'm going to fail. And if I fail, I don't really blame myself because it's like a lot of people, <laughs> I feel like the school let me down on some real shit because they never really wanted to, like, be around me or be next to me or be in a cabin like i would see like for class a vehicles i sometimes i would see like you know other instructors like get in the vehicle with them and instruct them okay do this okay do that there's nobody doing that shit with me they're like give me the keys here you go and shit there was only that one time there was only that one time that they did it and it was it was a little bitch it was a black cuban Black human Dominican Puerto Rican little bitch guy instructor who always talks who always like he always try to like slow key try to put me down when I don't do any do it correctly and I noticed he had like a different like bro I can I can talk about that for hours and which which is another reason why I don't like that fucking school like but that so basically little bitch um would he he just had this like one session with me where he was teaching me how to do just to drive straight. And drive back now with the vehicle it is manual so that means you have to use a gear to shift gears in order to like you have to go to first gear and go to second gear if you want to go like over x amount of miles an hour or whatever but basically i just needed to know how to do the first gear and reverse and like he would he you could tell like he i, I don't know i guess i smelled really bad even though all i was eating was like at the time to like you know just like a veggie smoothie, brown rice, and and uh, and uh, like salads. I think I stopped eating. I stopped consuming kefir, and I stopped consuming kombucha because I felt like that was contributing to the smell. But now, nah, like within the vehicle with me, he you can tell he was like impatient. You know how like when you're impatient, you like you like shake your knee, or you bounce your knee up and down. He was doing like this. While I was like trying to like learn how to do just drive straight and back, he's like, "No, you're doing it wrong." And then he will look outside the window and shit. Like, what the fuck? Like, I didn't see that type of fucking. <laughs> I didn't see that type of instruction or that type of attitude to all the other people he helped. That's all I'm saying. So it felt like, like even within the school, there were like people like. Like, they just didn't want me to be there, you know what I mean? But, and, you know, that gave me anxiety, and there was, like, there were some days where I was like, man, I don't want to go to this fucking school. But at the same time, like, I had to step myself out this year, like, bro, I'm here for a reason. I'm here to get this fucking CDO license in order to get a living wage and bounce. That's why I just stopped trying to do, like, the delivery service thing, because I'm like, fuck that shit. I need to just you know, expedite this process of trying to get this CDO thing, so I'm just going to go back to this school. And the thing about it is, like, when I talk about, when I talk about parking, when I talk about, like, how I go to the school, and I have to wait an hour, or I have to wait X amount of time just so I can finally get the vehicle and do parking, and then after, like, an hour or an hour and 30, like, the instructor leaves, you don't know how infuriating that is, is because, and it's infuriating because it's like I'm driving like it, in order to go to the school it takes around like 45 minutes to an hour to get there you know what I mean and while I'm going to that school going through like going to like you know uh, going through the highway and shit there's like these um there's there's a thing called sun pass I don't know how if it's like that in any other state or any other country but there's basically these passes like these um 
there's like these frames in like on the highway where if your vehicle passes you get deduct they deduct like x amount of money from your bank account or some sh stupid shit like that i don't know if that's a thing i know that's a thing in florida i don't know if that's a thing all the, every other around the other countries or around other states but that's the thing in florida so it's like okay not only am i wasting gas I'm also getting like money deducted from my bank account because I'm going through this like passing thing, this electronic passing thing. Not only that, I'm just driving an hour to get here. And when I finally get here, I only have like an hour and 30 minutes to do parking. Like, what the fuck? Like, like that's the thing that made it so infuriating. And, it, oh my God. It, to the point that like, that's why I really like, I, and, I really hate this school so much to the point that I need to constantly go to the school. Because if I constantly go to school, I'm going to train myself well enough to finally pass this thing. That's why today is my parking exam. So this is number two. And if I pass it, then the last thing I had to do, number three, is a driving exam. And if I pass that, then I guess that's when I get my commercial license. And then I can get a job or whatever. But the thing is, like with these jobs, it's like... If I go to Indeed, like Indeed or something like that, like most of these jobs, like they pay like somewhere between like, like 14 something dollars an hour or some stupid shit like that. Like, hold up. Uh, how do I switch my thing? Is that I like, am Gail, whoa, not McDowell. Is that down? So let's look at this. So I actually just looked in, let me, let me undo this because I was looking for jobs that were like around $30,000. So this is a driveway truck driver. They're not telling me the amount they're gonna pay, but let's look at the things that they are that is selling, telling me what's gonna pay. So one is from Trillium truck driver, class B. You make fourteen to fifteen fifty an hour. Um, nobody's telling me this. Uh, another one is like class B hardware imagination tech, thirteen to seventeen dollars an hour. Ooh, local truck driver, 35 to see. Hmm, what is this? Let me see this. A 26 box truck included commercial delivery B2B. 35, hmm. Okay, hmm. Wait a second. It says I can do a class A or class B. But it says I need a required. Why would I need required for a box truck? Well, I don't know if. Uh, uh, and then there's a CDL that pays $150 to $180 a day. I actually did some calculations on that, and that's like, that's like, um, like let me get my calculator. I think it was like 1875. So in the very least, if if you do this for eight hours a day, that's 1875. However, there's like going to be like a two to three day trip. Let's keep going down here. Uh, Class B driver, ooh, 15 to 17 dollars. A and B pipe and supply. And basically, I know like yesterday I saw some I saw some bullshit where it was like they were gonna pay you like uh oops shit. they were gonna pay you like uh uh like not fifteen dollars. They were gonna pay you like eleven to thirteen dollars or something crazy like that. So it's like, oh my god, these these prices are so fucking low. But if I can at least get like a 16 to 17 dollar an hour job i really wish i can get like a 20 dollar an hour job but looking at these jobs i don't think i'm gonna find that unless it's like i work for like coca-cola or something like that uh, that's the only way i think i'm gonna get a job where i make 20 dollars an hour for a class b but the only reason why i did this class b or i was pursuing this class b is not because i want a career in it i just need something at this moment so i can still study for like web development and you know but still possibly be able to get like a, a small apartment and you know live on my own and stuff like that and i don't know if i'm really going to be able to live on my own with 15 16 dollars an hour but we'll, we'll see we'll see with that uh yeah uh so i don't know man i really don't know and I've, i was thinking about getting like a class a now but now it's like i don't want to do this cdl bullshit again so i don't know like I feel like I'm really close to getting this this license. I feel like if I pass this thing, then next week all I have to do is just pass that, and then when I pass that, I finally get a license. But you know, like within a lot of like jobs, 
when you're first start, just starting out, a lot of people are going to deny you the job. So even if I do find something really good on a job board where it pays $20 an hour, like they're not going to get me. They're going to get the guy who has three years of experience or the guy who has four years of experience as opposed to the guy who has zero years of experience just coming out of the CDL trading thing unless they really need so many different, they need so many different truckers uh, because I don't know, like, I don't know, the previous truckers went on a strike or some shit, I don't know, and they all just bounced and said, fuck it, we're gonna get something else, I don't know, um, but yeah, that's, that's the thing, and I've been just eating, like, with my diet, pretty much, I just, again, I just, I've been saying the same thing all the time, I've been eating a veggie smoothie, which consists of, it consists of spinach, it consists of celery, it consists of pars parsley. It consists of kale. Um, because people are like, oh, you should try kale. That's another thing. That's another thing. Like, I've actually been, I did like a grocery haul video. And people are like, you should not eat broccoli. And I think somebody mentioned kale. Uh, so I bought, I started buying kale to add to it. Uh, you know, I actually add kefir now. I'm starting to drink kefir. Like, two weeks ago, I started to drink kefir again. Um, but I don't, I'm not drinking like the homemade one. I'm drinking like the store bought one, like the Lifeway Kefir. Uh, Lifeway Unsweetened Kefir is like $4.39, $4.39 from Publix. Um, I start just put, I put like a cup of that into that thing and I put cayenne pepper into that, you know, just, to, I don't know. And uh, yeah, no, it just like pretty much blended. There's other things that's in it, but that's, those are the essential things. Um, and then I'll just like eat like two salads, which is, which is consists of like spinach and bell peppers and cucumbers. And then I'll eat like brown rice. And then like this week or last week, I started including chicken again. I stopped eating meat because I felt like, oh, this is going to make me smell bad. But now I'm including meat again. So I don't know if I give off a funk, but I don't give a shit. I want to eat meat, you know what I'm saying? Like, and at the same time, I actually calculated. This is the thing. I'm actually going to count my cal. I was. I'm in the process of counting calories, so I know like the amount of calories that I have, the amount of choline it's going to have, the amount of fiber it's going to have. I actually have like a chart here. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Uh, let's see here. Um, let me see. food chart food let's let's just do this so so this is like the food I did <laughs> the typical foods I typically eat and this is like the veggie steak like I was talking about the veggie smoothie or whatever and this is like the amount of calories in total it's gonna have it's gonna approximately have like 497 calories 39 grams of choline Let's say 33 grams of choline, 30 grams of carbs. The reason why I'm like calculating carbs and sugar is because I think carbs and sugar makes me smell bad. So I'm trying to like avoid sugar as much as possible. Uh, I don't even know how this became 30. How did this become 30? That don't even make any sense. Next, now that I think about it. How did this become 30? How can this be 30 grams of sugar? Fiber. Let me see if this is proper. I think it is how did this become 30 that doesn't make any sense um and then there's protein now i have to recalculate this because now i'm just like looking at this stuff and this is impossible oh wait a second because 13 and 12 and then there's two point okay it's maybe this is realistic maybe this is realistic now that i look at it okay but the, yeah that's that's the thing i'm doing at this moment um and then like with the food i just calculated <laughs> like the chicken thigh, like one chicken thigh is, th here's another thing, like if I go to like food, hold up, I calculated it with this, so I go to self-nutrition data, um, so self-nutrition dot self, or uh, self, or uh, nutrition data dot self dot com, and I go to like one ounce of this, and it gives me, you know, the calories, Fiber, protein, where's the protein? Protein, blah, blah, blah. What I did was, 
loot up a second here. Let's see. I have actually a weight, but this is supposed I have a weight. So this is technically like a weight for like for like packages. Hold on, let me this is like a weight for packages. So like in 2014, I had this really good idea. Like I was like, yeah, I don't want to go outside and I want to work for myself and be my own boss. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sell stuff on eBay. So I watched, I watched a lot of videos on YouTube on how to sell things. And I was like really into it. Like I'm going to, I'm going to sell things on eBay. And I bought this, uh, uh, I bought this uh, this package weigher, and it actually works. It actually really works. You don't. Even, I mean, you could technically just use it for packages, but you can also use it for food. So I like put like a, I put like a chicken thigh on it, and it weighed like three point oh four, like three point oh ounces or three point yeah three point four ounces, and I just calculated it like three point four times one ounce of this, and I got like one hundred fifty seven calories, eighty one grams of choline and 26.9 grams of protein so that's pretty interesting I think I'm gonna like start calculating my meals or yeah starting trying to document how much how much uh, calories I get how much choline I get how much protein I get and stuff like that because I know I don't get I feel like I don't even get around 1600 calories honestly with all this stuff I'm eating I don't think I hit 1600 and I want to at least hit 1800 calories and hit any some somewhere below like 300 grams of choline because i don't know if i have t-mal or not so this is just me being safe about it like just just maybe i don't have t-mal but just in case i just only want to eat 300 grams of choline and i want to get like at least 100 grams less than 100 grams of carbs and possibly less than 30 grams of sugar or some shit like that and also 30 grams of fiber because you're supposed to get fiber over like 30 something grams. Um, so yeah, that's the thing I'm de definitely doing. Uh, other things that I could be talking about. Other things I could be talking about, man. I wanted to talk about this. Uh, I wanted to talk about the fact that I never really talk about other things outside. I don't really talk about other things outside of my life. Or just like talk about like just everyday topics like entertainment and shit. Which I feel like I should because I just watched recently watched this really good Netflix film, um, and it's from it's actually Dragon Quest. If you never heard of Dragon Dragon Quest, is a video game that came out. Did it come out in the early eighties? Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest. Let me see if I can hit. Uh, let me do it like this. Dragon Quest. Dragon. Whoop. Um, Dragon Quest. Oh, so the first relief came out in 1986. So Dragon Quest is a funny game to me because I I played this game. I think the first game I actually played was actually Dragon Quest Seven, but this is on 3DS and that uh that's on the 3DS and I think that came out like 2016. But I played like Dragon Quest. It was originally called Dragon Warrior. In America, because of like some type of copyright issue, like there's already somebody that had the name Dragon Quest, so they couldn't say Dragon Quest. In any case, I have like a large. I have I played a number of Dragon Warrior games or Dragon Quest games. I played Dragon Warrior Seven. I played Dragon Warrior Four. I played Dragon Warrior Eight. I played Dragon Warrior Monsters, which is like a Pokemon clone, but with like Dragon Warrior. Basically, it's like an RPG or some shit like that. And on Netflix, I was like browsing Netflix for some reason. Let me see if I can go. I was browsing Netflix for some reason. And I found, I, I saw this video about Dragon Quest. And it's called like Dragon Quest Your Story. Oh shit, here it is. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Dragon Quest Your Story. And this is like a CGI render Dragon Quest. If there's any type of Dragon Quest fans out there, man, I just saw this shit. This shit's really fucking good, man. This is really good. I give it like an 8 out of 10. And this is the thing. This Dragon Quest is from Dragon Quest V. And I think that came out on the Super Nintendo. I think it came out on Super Nintendo. Dragon Quest V. 
Uh, it doesn't matter, but I never played that game. I never played that one. But even then, like, I watched it, and I, th I thought this shit was so fucking good. Now, for people who didn't ever play Dragon Quest, which is probably, like, 99% of you, no one gives a shit, but... I don't know. I just recommend the movie. I thought that was a good movie. I think I want to start talking about, like, movies and, like... If I see, like, a good movie, or if I see, like, some type of good entertainment or something like that... Like, there's another thing, like, that I saw that was, I thought was really good on Netflix... And it was like a stand-up special from a guy named like Tom Segura. Ah oh, man, where is this? This is why I hate Netflix because, like, when you go into like the the home page, you just want to see what you recently watched. But that's like random. It's like randomized. Sometimes they'll show you what you recently watched. Sometimes they'll just show you action movies and comedies. And I never asked for that dumb shit. <laughs> I'm so I'm so mad. <laughs> I'm so mad about that. Um. Oh man, I just wow! I, it was like it's not here. Yeah, I, was it called Disgraceful? I think it was called Disgraceful. Yeah, it was like Tom Segura Disgraceful. That's such. It was such a. I thought it, I thought it was funny. I thought it was really funny, and I think I've seen this guy before, but I don't remember his face. But yeah, man. Uh, is there anything else to talk about? I guess I could talk about the interview I had with Daniel. Uh, that was like the last interview I had. Uh, the things I could say about that is like it's really surprising. It's really surprising that people still want to do interviews. You know what I mean? Because it's like the reason why I stopped interviews, I, and I didn't necessarily stop interviews, is based upon how many people want to do interviews. It's based upon how many people want to do interviews. And if nobody wants to do a goddamn interview, like, then there's nothing I can do about it. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing I can do about it. And when there was, like, a space, like, even, it was a point in time where even if I didn't do interviews, I would show up on a Friday night and just, like, stay there for, like, 30 minutes to an hour, and then I leave. And But I stopped doing that because I'm like, bro, like... Like, nobody wants to do it. There was just, there was too many uh, instances of people, like, saying, Oh, I want to do an interview, wooty wooty woo. And then the week, the week of their interview, I try to contact them again to ask, Oh, yeah, are you still interested in doing an interview? And they'll just ghost me. And I had it happen so many times to the point that I was just like, Man, I don't want to do this shit anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm interested in doing it, but other people are not. But at the same time, like, I think to myself... Um, uh, I think about how, I think about, like, how important it, it really is. Like, is it really that important to have, like, a hundred people talk about having, like, these older conditions where they have T-Mal or something else? Is it really that important? I feel like it was important because, um, like, before, before I even started my, my interview or my channel thing, like, when I saw so many other people do it, so many other people tell their story, I felt like it's really impactful because before before they even came on the internet or before they even came on YouTube and made videos talking about their experiences having T-Mail or whatever, like, I originally thought it was all in my head. When I was, like, a teenager, when I was, like, 15 and 16 dealing with this shit, I thought I was going crazy, so... When you have like a hundred people saying like, nah, I'm experiencing the same thing and they're like different age ranges, you know, there's women saying this, there's men saying this, like, you know, okay, there's something here and this is, this verifies that you're not crazy. This verifies that you're not crazy and there needs to be somebody that looks into it. But at the same time, like, even if I get a hundred people, it's not like there's going to be a scientist that says, wow, this is very interesting. Let me use a... Uh, <laughs> X amount of my time to investigate what is causing this condition. Like, that's not happening. Um, and if we possibly do want that to happen, I think we have to, like, actually go after these types of scientists. Now, I don't know which scientists we should go after. Um, so that's a thing. So, but going back to the Daniel thing, uh, is there anything I need, really need to say about that? Uh, yeah, I didn't do it in a long time. He was very, like, inspirational and shit. Like, oh, man, all you got to do is move forward and shit. I mean, I, I guess that's true. But it's sort of hard sometimes. I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm going to keep it real with you. Sometimes it's really hard. And especially if you don't really have, like, um, 
you don't have sufficient support. You don't have sufficient support, whether it's like family members or even like a pet. You know, I've heard some like research about how like having like just like a dog and shit like brings down depression. It, it, like it, 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 having having a dog or or animal is like a supportive thing, and that ultimately can bring down like help with help you cope with some type of mental illness. I know like people use dogs. Sometimes people use dogs for people who are suffering from. Is it called PSTD or PTSD um, for for like military, like people who are coming back from like the war, or coming back from like Iraq, and saw like a lot of fucked up things, and they now have like PTSD or PSTD. Like they get they give them training dogs because when they try to talk to therapists, they don't feel like they're they don't feel comfortable enough to talk to them. So instead, they actually start giving them dogs, and with the dogs they feel they found out that there's like less instances of people committing suicide because that's like that's the thing that people who in the military like possibly get like once they have PSTD I keep I don't know if it's PTSD or PSTD I think it's PTSD once they have PTSD like they're in, they have a higher likelihood of committing suicide or get, getting into deep depression and stuff so like now when they give them like dogs or you know that supportive animal for some reason they're able to that alleviates their stress or it helps them cope with things i've been thinking about getting a dog too but i don't know i don't i don't know i don't love, i don't know if i like the idea of cleaning cleaning up another animal shit i don't know if i i'm in love with that idea so that's why i never did it <laughs> but it was like 37 minutes jesus fucking christ yep yeah, um Hopefully, hopefully I pass this parking thing so then next week I can do the training for driving and then get finally get the license and get out that stupid fucking school. And once I get out of that school, I'm going to fucking down. I'm going to write the worst review ever. I'm going to be like, these motherfuckers never gave a fuck about me. They never cared about me. No, <laughs> no I'm not going to do I don't know. I'm thinking about it. But yeah, I'm going to end this shit right here, bro. The end.